Today's Toy Spot, we are having a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends. This is the Dormammu Wave. We're looking today at Iron Fist. Seeing as we've looked at such dark characters, uh, in the sense of dark colored figures, in the last little while, it's kind of a nice breath of fresh air to be getting a very bright green and yellow character here in Iron Fist. And I have to apologize again, Iron Fist. I'm so sorry. I forgot that you were in this wave. I said that there was still the Astral Doctor Strange, and that was it. And I forgot all about you. Uh, Iron Fist comes with a pair of interchangeable hands. He also comes with fire that would be used for Dormammu, as well as the top collar section, which is also why we should be looking at this guy first, and then look at Astral Doctor Strange, because we're going to be popping the head right onto that. It's a lot easier, I think, than putting this on after the fact. The side of the box features Iron Fist, also carried over on the other side there as well, in the back of the package, a master of spiritual energy, Iron Fist, unlocks the highest mental and physical human potential to dominate enemies in combat. Nice read-up. Down below, other eight figures we've been covering over the series of these reviews. Collect all of them, you get this guy right here. This guy right here. And this is a case, actually, where there's no real one, there's no real one, there's no real one character that you can omit and still build yourself Dormammu. Even thinking that uh, Carl Mordo, uh, you could have just simply not gotten him if he didn't want the skulls, he actually came with the legs. So really, all these characters are necessary in order to fill, finish this guy over here. Uh, also, if you are interested in picking this up for yourself, Spot will put the link down below to Entertainment Earth. This is where actually I picked up this entire wave. Spot's going to take a break and get this opened up. When we come back, though, we're getting a better look at the Marvel Legends series Dormammu Wave. We're going to be looking at Iron Fist. There's more heading away, guys. Don't go anywhere. Before we have a look at Iron Fist, let's have a look at the Build-A-Figure components that he would be included with for Dormammu. And that is the upper collar area of his torso. Looking at this, this actually reminds me of the old Toy Biz uh, Sentinel. Just kind of the same similar style of purple that they used. I find it is carried over here for uh, Dormammu's collar. Or really, actually, for all of Dormammu. Love this purple color, though. Let's go ahead and add this to the figure itself. There's really not much in the way of assembly. I'm just really essentially sliding over top of the torso. And there you have Dormammu minus the head. So note as well... And I keep losing that leg. I'm going to have to pop that. Not apply more pressure spot. you got to get that completely in place. Uh, something else I didn't mention when we added the arms. If we incorporate the skulls, there's two different ways you can display the figure. If we incorporate the skulls that would in have come with Carl uh, Mondo, or Mordo, uh, they don't sit in his hands very well. But I just wanted to show you. Yeah, it's a little... A little on the trickier side to get them actually hold in. Uh, it doesn't help either of them holding Dormammu in hand. But you can actually hold the skulls. Or the other thing that comes with Iron Fist is a pair of flames. And the flames also can just fit into his hand. And the flames, if you manage to wedge them in between his fingers well enough, they seem to do a pretty good job of staying in place. I can't say that, unfortunately, for the Skulls. The Skulls clearly, to me, is an afterthought. They thought to themselves, you know what? Well, we could just really retool, and I'm certain this is a Ghost Rider head. We could retool this and just have him holding those. But that's not really what they were intended for. And it seems that way when, when he's holding them. They just, again, they sit very loose. So I might probably end up just displaying him with these. I, I don't really know. That's all, to, that's all hearsay until we actually finish the figure. In the meantime, we're just missing a head. So let's put that to the side. Iron Fist's, Iron Fist's uh, other accessories, he comes with a pair of bandaged wrists. They feel like they're a little too colored, saturated, and brown. I wish that they were just a little on the lighter side. But uh, all things considered, it's nice at least that they include those. As surprisingly, the default hands that you get him out of package in are translucent yellow. I actually would have been more, more uh, used to seeing like this being the interchangeable hand, and then the default hands out of packaging would have been these. To uh, switch them out, and just actually before we do that, 
The hands are, there's actually a fist in there. Hopefully you can see it. There is a green fist in there and then they've just covered it, encapsulated it in that translucent yellow. It's a nice effect because it looks skeletal underneath all that as opposed to just making it simply a translucent wrist or you know hand there. But they go ahead and just pop that off, a very simple peg, pop that off and you can replace it with the bandaged wrists. Personally speaking, I might al almost favor the more bandaged wrists as opposed to the, the yellow wrists, but that's just, you know, again, just my, my preference. If you feel you want to put the, the yellow wrists on, by all means, you can do that. That's the benefit of being a collector. You can kind of cater your figures to the way that you want to have them displayed. I'm personally speaking, would probably display them with the wrist, but again, opinions vary. Let's go ahead and pop that into place. There we go. You could probably guess it that Iron Fist is utilizing a Spider-Man body. Some notable things such as the, the uh, shoulder crunch ad additional articulation that is only normally found on Spider-Man. And also, something that I'm not crazy about, he has the Spider-Man duck build feet. Look at them. They literally look like a pair of duck bills. Duck bills for feet. I kind of find that funny. It actually even looks even more like duck bills when you've got them in yellow, but the feet look a little on the broad side. Iron Fist, you can kind of pass that off. You know, as a martial artist, maybe he has more duck build feet, but still. The coloring on him is pretty good, and actually one of the better highlights of the figure is the sculpt on the face. The face is actually quite good. Lending itself to giving him a Spider-Man body, Maybe he comes across just a little on the lanky side. He could have beefed up just a little bit, um, favoring, I think, a more so bigger body myself, but some people would prefer a thinner looking Iron Fist. I do like that they've given him a darker flesh tone as opposed to giving him a lighter flesh tone. The yellow also is a nice, more warmer yellow as being cold yellow. And he's got the little bandana on the back there. So points I could probably give to the head sculpt. Pretty good head sculpt. I like that. Uh, Iron Fist's also notable trait is the yellow sash that's wrapped around his waist. It is a loose component. It just is going to flop around on you. That hopefully does not bother you too much. Um, I have to admit, paint's pretty clean. Arguably, though, you could say, well, he only really has two colors. He's got the green, it's olive green, and then he's also got the yellow. How do you mess that up? Well, you know, you can find a way, especially when it comes to yellow. Yellow could have been done wrong, but all things noted, actually the paint's pretty clean on him. He comes very across as a flat figure. Little too thin for my liking, but uh, all around, not a bad looking figure, even though he's got, let me just, uh, actually, you know what, let's talk about this, because I don't want to, this is a topic of point I don't want to miss out on. Somebody's going to probably call me on this. I'm just going to spin the sash to the side for a second. One of the problems I have with this figure, it's not maybe something I would notice as much on Spider-Man, but the glaring, glaring issue of having his thighs sticking out further. Let me even just move his arms out of the way. His thighs are sticking out further than his lower torso. Humanly, that's not possible. For any person to actually have thighs sticking further out than your than your waist, it would all almost ask the question, well, how is your legs attached to your lower waist? Uh, again, maybe perhaps this would not have been a good build for Iron Fist. It seems to be passable when it's for, for uh, Spider-Man. I almost have to look at my old Spider-Man figures to see if this is as big of an issue or if I'm just noticing it more on Iron Fist. He has a really flat behind, but like this whole section here, just is not possible for a human being to have proportions like this. Uh, perhaps that is all the more reason why the sash can hide some of that, but the sash really is only going to sit to the side. It's still pretty noticeable, I have to admit, and I'm glad I mentioned it because I knew if I forgot it, somebody would say, Spot, how could you miss such a glaring concern at such a very narrow abdomen? going into very large thighs. Just doesn't make any sense. Wanted to put that out. Wanted to put that in the video so that nobody would think I forgot. When it comes to his posability, 
Uh, now, he will have more posability because he's got the Spider-Man build. Not only does he have the ball joint head, but he also has the hinge on the neck area. As mentioned, he's got the, the shoulder blade cut. So you get a little bit more posability there. I, I like that, especially for an Iron Fist character. Uh, the shoulders are still on a ball, ball joint up at the top. There are a ball peg point. A swivel on the bicep. A double bend elbow. Don't worry, this is always always pops off these. Pop that back into place. There we go. Double hinge elbow. A rotation. If you want to technically count it only by the way, by the virtue of that this is being pegged in. He's also got a, there we go, again, a hinge on the wrist, rotation on the hand. Let's pop that back into place. He has an upper torso crunch right there. Uh, a waist swivel, which is really stiff on this figure. Ball joint legs. I mean, give this guy a sandwich or something so he can beef up a little bit. Rotation on the on the thigh, double hinge knee. Uh, nothing in the boots because the boot actually is just painted as a continuation from the lower leg. But he does have a hinge on the foot and a slight pivot there as well. This would be, I would say, a look from a distance figure. From a distance, the figure looks great. It's upon closer inspections that you see some <clears throat> just some construction issues. Not really, if you can overlook the fact that his thighs stick out as much as they are, the figure is actually pretty good and one of my favorites from this wave. Before you jump on me and say, well, how could you have such glaring problems with a figure like this and yet still be a great figure? Because overall, the figure from head to toe looks good. It's not the best constructed, but overall, it looks good, and it's one of my personal favorites from this wave. Today's Toy Spot, we are continuing our looks at the Hasbro Marvel Legends. This was the Dormammu wave, and we're looking today at Iron Fist. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have one more video, one more. That's Astral, Doctor Strange. Then we're going to look at Dormammu. Then we're going to call it a day. Store the store owner can go home and see his family. Uh, stay tuned for those videos. Of course, let me know down below what you think of these particular figures, and I'll see you next time.